All right, so whenever your battery's on, this is your tongue jack. You crank, extend, it's pretty easy. It'll help, that, uh, help you when you level. You have a light that's right here, on or off. Um, if you're not using it, just kind of make sure it's off because it will slowly kill the battery if you're not plugged into power. Right here are our propane tanks. What I like to do is your left hand side, the driver's side will stay on. It will be on, left, Lucy. That will stay on. So that basically breaks them into two different tanks. So if this one runs out, you know it. And it doesn't automatically switch over, but you do know that this one's out. That really helps me more than the renter. So if you were to run out of propane and you all of a sudden don't have propane, just come out here and turn on the passenger side tank. That's all it is. And then there's a lever in here. You'll have to make sure it's flipped towards the passenger side. It's your trailer battery. You don't really need to do anything with that. Coming over here. This is where we keep most of the storage as far as there's a level in here. There's a coax cable. Um, we have a fold out table. And we have two camping chairs. Your levelers. This is for depending on which side of your which side of your uh, the trailer is level, which side needs to go up, down, whatever. Just take these or little ramps. Super easy. Put them in front of whichever side needs to go up. Put them in front of both tires, right there and right there, and then. Drive forward, so you're obviously still attached. Drive forward, and this will slowly start to roll and lift this side of the trailer up. And then when you're level, just stop. And then we have little chocks that go behind them. Like this. So once you go up and you start to get level, you just put that in behind the, behind the tire, and it stops it on the chalk. much inside here there's also a broom there's a light and then your light for out front of the camper is in there that's for inside the battery's off right now and then that switch is for outside that. satellite TV and antenna hookup and then a 110 right here for a TV if you want to sit it outside inside here we have our Riddle, a black stone. We have this cool little hose right here that easily hooks up to the side, like that. And then the other end goes to the bumper connection. If you look down here, there's two different connections. This is made specifically for the bumper, right here. It will not connect to that one over there. It's a different size and it won't work. right there so right here if you connect it super easy just pops in and then turn this valve open then you will have gas to the blackstone with the blackstone once you hook everything up and you're going to light it um, it's not instantaneous it's got to get propane all the way from there back here and then into the blackstone so just light it let it Kind of sit there for a minute, turn it off, let it sit there for a minute, and then light it. It would take you a few times to actually get it to uh, spark. But once it does, it gets nice and hot and it's great to cook on. Inside here we have random stuff. Um, all your utensils for cooking on the Blackstone. There's some charcoal, lighter fluid, mosquito, um, candle, matches. There's even a picnic table blanket back there, cover and then a uh, some fire ant killer. This fridge only works on shore power, so only when you're plugged into a site is this fridge gonna work. So if you're not camping for a long time, like a week, it's almost pointless because uh, it doesn't get cold enough within, I don't know, a day or so. So it's almost pointless to even use unless you're long-term in it. Back here is a bike rack if you're going to take your, your uh, bikes with you. Uh, super easy to do. Just pop it off, 
both sides and then sit your bike on there and go around the frame and lock it in. It's pretty easy. Spare tire, obviously, there's also a four-way in that front storage compartment that I showed you um, to loosen these lug nuts and then also loosen the lug nuts on the tires themselves. Right here is an outdoor shower. You just need to unlock it. And then uh, as long as you're hooked up to water or you have your water pump on, the shower will work. This is where you plug in your 30 amp. So going back to that 30 amp, you have a surge protector and you have your cord. So the surge protector is gonna plug into the campground the campgrounds uh, connection, whatever it is, usually, you know, like a little tower with a plug, all right? And once you plug in, 30 amp connection, you have all these lights. You want green, green, and green. The two greens mean you have power on and everything's good. No open neutral, no open ground, none of that. And then you'll have power right there. So once you do that, you'll plug the other side into the surge protector. And then this side, lines up with the trailer back there at the 30 amp and then you just screw it on. Once you have power, you'll know your trailer has power. Once you plug in and screw it on, this little light bulb right here will light up blue. And that means you have power to the trailer itself. Always make sure you do the surge protector first and make sure you have two green lights before you do anything else. If not, you can cause a lot of issues with the trailer. Um, so it's just just make sure that you have your surge protector plugged in first make sure the lights are green then plug in your 30 amp cord from the camp uh, from the campgrounds power to the trailer down here and they're labeled is your black tank and your gray tank drains always make sure these are closed unless you're using it at a campground you just pop this lid off pull the black and it'll flush out all the black tank water waste. Close it, pull the gray, and it'll run all the gray water out. When you, when you go to clean out your tanks, make sure you do the black first because the tube that's connected to this that's running into the sewer is gonna get disgusting because of the black tank. So let's do that one first. Make sure it's completely drained, then close it, then we do the gray last. That way, the gray water, which isn't as dirty, it's still a little dirty, obviously washing your hands and such, brushing your teeth, it's still dirty, but it's not as disgusting as the sewer water. So do the gray water second, that way it cleans out the tubes that you're using a little bit so they're not as nasty when you go to do it. When you're done, always make sure these two are closed and the cap is on. Inside here is the dry dock for the water and all the connections. So when you go to connect your water, if you unscrew this, you can connect from the bottom water hose straight to your city water connection. On the other end of the water hose, on the campsite end, you'll use this water filter and regulator. It just screws into the spigot at the campsite, uh, wherever you're at. When you turn it on, make sure your water pressure is at 40 PSI. If it is not, this little adjuster right here, plus or minus, it's super easy. Use a flat tip screwdriver, plus to go higher, and obviously minus to go lower, depending on what pressure you need and what pressure you're at. But always 40 PSI. The bo bottom end of the uh, water hose goes here, and then run it through here to your city water connection. And that is your water for the trailer. Inside here also is the battery disconnect. You know your battery's on. Easiest way is to see that blue light right there. That means your battery's on. Right here are your stabilizer jacks. I labeled them aft for your rear and forward for your two jacks right here. These are your jacks, your stabilizer jacks right here. You have four of them, two on the front, two on the back. All those are for is for stabilizing the trailer. Not to lift it, or not to level it, none of that. Just to stabilize so it doesn't wobble when you got all your kids going crazy inside of it. All right, so it's easy. Extend, 
I'll retract. We'll do the forward ones. We'll retract them, right? Look down here. They're retracting. They sit on those little yellow uh, feet, pads, whatever you want to call them, right? Watch. I'm just going to touch. Once you kind of start hearing it or feeling it lift, you can kind of hear the change. That's it. You don't go any higher. They're just to stabilize the trailer. Inside here is all the sewer stuff. Where I show it in the black tank and gray tank in the back, this is everything for that. I've got some gloves so you don't have to touch anything with your hands. And then there's all site, all sorts of connections to figure out what you need for your um, you know, campsite. Or if you even use it at all. Now if the, if the trailer comes back with a full gray or or not even full, with black and gray water and waste inside the tank, I have to charge a $75 fee because um, I have to take it somewhere and clean it, and they charge me, so. The hose. This is a water hose. It comes with a, I have it connected to each other right now, but it comes with a 90 degree fitting you can take it off right you can take it off sometimes I use this fitting on the campground spigot uh, depending on how you need to angle your, fil your, your filter you know you might need to angle it like that or like that whatever you need so this comes off you don't have to use it at all but if you do throw it in the trailer and then the other side of the filter of the other side of the water hose plugs into your city water connection and that's it Closing the stairs, always make sure that this door is completely open. If not, these will hit the door. Always make sure the door is open, push it in, kind of turn this a little bit so you got your latches in. Push it as far back as it'll go and lock it. That'll lock your stairs into place. The door is two separate pieces. It's a screen door and then your main door. Close that like that. And that's a screen door. Nothing can get in. You have your little plastic piece right here. You can leave this open. It's on a hinge and it'll hold itself tight. However, this screen door will not close and lock if this is closed. Okay? You have an issue. Always make sure that this is open and then close your door. When leaving, make sure you take this handle and fold it forward. All right? That kind of does two purposes. It doesn't stick out and won't hit anything as you drive. Also kind of a little safety feature to hold the door in place if it were to, for some reason, open. And always make sure the ladder's inside. All right, guys, uh, here's the inside. So first things first, we'll start at the, uh, basically the control panel for the whole trailer. So going from right to left with the red switches, you're going to have your ceiling light. All right, so this lights up all the ceilings that are in the dinette kitchen area. With this, all the lights light up, but they're also push buttons so you can turn off whichever ones that you do not want on. And then from then on, those will stay off when you hit the switch on and off. All right, so every single light that you see actually in the whole trailer are all push button lights, okay? And that's with that switch. Once again, some lights don't go with the switch. All right, so that's your ceiling light. Your porch is your LED strip that goes along the awning. There's an LED strip up there. That goes on and off with the porch light, okay? Just like that. Water, your water pump is for when you're not hooked up to city sewer, city water, excuse me. So if you're boondocking, dry camping somewhere and you don't have a um, water hose hooked up and you do have a full fresh water tank or you have water in your fresh water tank, you can turn on your water pump. All that does is help you move water from your fresh water tank to your sinks and your shower. That's all it does. Once again, if you're hooked up to it with a water hose, you don't need that on. Water heater, electric, so if you have um, your 30 amp plugged in outside, 
your electric water, pe water heater is going to be what you want to use. If you're not hooked up to 30 amp outside, you want to use your LP gas water heater. What that does is uses propane and heats the water. Uh, instead of a 30 amp electrical plug-in, you're going to use LP gas. Just uses propane. But with that, you have to make sure that you have enough propane. Alright, so those are all those switches. Now down here you have your glide room. That's your slide. In and out. It's super easy. We want to go out because it's in already. Just hold it down. With the glide room, with the slide, it'll let you know when it's done. It, it will stop. Always make sure that you're on a level surface before you do this or it could mess up your slide. So that's the slide. You'll hear it slow down and then it'll stop even if you're holding the button. Now with the awning, this is your awning, extend and retract, same thing, we want to extend it. Only use your awning if it's not windy and not raining. We've already had one awning arm rip off because somebody left it open during a storm. Uh, the awning filled with water and slowly sagged in the middle and then one of the arms were bent and ripped off the side of the trailer. So. If the weather isn't perfect, don't use your awning because it's just going to cause an issue. Alright, so if you hold down extend, you'll see it slowly going out. Now with the awning, what you want to do is slowly stop when you see the flap come down at the end. See the flap? Stop right there. That's as much as you want to go with the awning. Okay. Any further you can start causing issues. Once again, you can see how far it extends and it's kind of, um, you know, loose and kind of floppy. So any kind of heavy wind or heavy rain, it's going to sag right in the middle and then it'll, the, the weight will go to one side or the other and slowly damage the arms. And if you're a renter on RV Share or Outdoorsy, um, that's going to be an issue because that's most likely going to come out of your pocket from your deposit. So bring it back in, awning, retract. When it's retracted, it'll stop. That does it on, on its own. Alright, so it's stopped. The awning is in and it's safe. Rainstorms and uh, any kind of high winds. Again, I can't reiterate how important it is to make sure that that thing is in during a storm. Or if they're gone. Or if you're gone. Do not leave it out if you're gone because especially if you're in Florida, you never know when anything's going to pop up. I mean, we have storms all the time that just come and go. Um, so if you're not outside and if it's not beautiful, leave it in. All right, so starting up here on our trailer specifically, we have some games and movies. Also have a little RV lamp nightlight that you can plug in. We have a TV. We also have a Furion radio down here that will power speakers both inside and outside of the trailer. So if you don't want people outside hearing your music, make sure, see the one and two up here. Make sure you hit two and it is gone. That's inside only. Those are your zones. Zone one and zone two. Zone one is inside, zone two is outside. If you do want everybody hearing your music and you don't want to, zone two, zone one off. Then it's all outside. Listen to the stat. <laughs> Alright, one and two. Make sure. Control for the uh, TV. And then down here, we have just some odds and ends. We have a, a washer's game, some fans, some bug spray, and stuff like that. All the owner, ma owner, owner's manuals that you need. And then our little cheat sheet from Pearl, our camper. Um, just random facts, how to disconnect, how to connect the sewer, setting up your trailer, connecting utilities, house rules, um, even the size 
the length, width, and height of the trailer, which is very helpful if you're going um, under tunnels or if you're going to reserve a campsite at your next place. You need to know how big Pearl is. So the dinette, kitchen table, right? It also folds into a bed, or I guess um, condenses into a bed. You just pull this table up, and then these two legs come out, and you can just lay them under it if you want. This table will sit on these little black rubber lips right here. And then you just rearrange the cushions to make a bed. Bedding's underneath. The bedding is underneath inside here, along with two pillows. All of the um, blinds in the trailer are easy, just up and down. They hold themselves however far or low that you want to go with them. We have um, more storage in here. This is actually a pantry, but we mainly use it for when renters come to get it as bedding. Blankets, pillow, um, towels, sheets for both the bunks, the, the queen bed, and the dinette. Which we'll have made. But. Which will be made when they are picked up. Down here is the fuse panel. Circuit breaker box. All the main circuit breakers for anything important on the trailer. Your air conditioner, your GFIs, your microwave, your water connections, your hot water, and all that type of stuff are all right here. Carbon monoxide detector down here. Inside the bathroom, you have one switch for the lights, but once again, these lights can be turned on and off depending on if it's too much or what. We have a fan up here to vent, just like that. Always make sure it's closed if it's raining. In the cabinet, we have a toothbrush holder and whatever stuff you want to so uh, leave in there. We have a bar of soap that we leave with every rental. Um, from our soap company, Traveler Soap Co. Washcloths, hand towels, anything you need, we try to leave in here. Down here is just a little bit more stuff, mainly cleaning supplies, but then there's also toilet paper um, and then stuff to put in the black tank if it for some reason were to start to smell. The sink is normal operated sink, just like any other bathroom you've ever been in. Same with the shower. Turn it on. Uh, if the water pump is on, it'll work. And then the shower head. Your, uh, your um, toilet is a foot flush. It's down here on the bottom. Push that with your foot and hold it down to flush it. That's it. Yeah, uh, turn the water pump on. The water pump on, you'll see. Hold it down. Just barely and it'll fill with the water. Push it all the way down and it'll flush and also run water. Always make sure when you're done that it has just a little bit of water to keep that black seal down there on the bottom of the toilet wet. Um, if that does not stay wet, it'll dry eventually, start to dry rot and crack, and then um, sewer smell will slowly get up into the trailer and you don't want that. All right, so always make sure there's water in there. Shower, turn it on. Pull this for your shower head. That looks great and doesn't have a trickle. And then turn it back off. That's it for the shower. There's a little drain down here if you want to close it or open it. And there's a shower curtain. Remember, if it's raining outside or you're not really in here, always close this vent so we don't have any rain leak through. There's also a vent in the kitchen area. It does not have a fan, but you can still open it and receive fresh air. Just once again, make sure that it's closed if you're leaving or raining or anything like that. Two bunk beds. Inside both bunk beds, they each have their own light. You just have to click it to turn it on. And then back in the back of each bunk bed, there are USB ports, 110 outlets, and then little cubbies for you to put your stuff. The lower bunk also has the emergency exit. All four windows on each bunks have their own blinds. Moving to the refrigerator. Refrigerator is a good size for being in a travel trailer, especially a 29 foot travel trailer. 
and you have your own freezer. When you pick up your trailer, these will be nice and cold already. They run off of propane when you're not hooked up to power. So if you go boondocking or dry camping, as long as you have propane in your tanks, and this is set to gas, this will run cold. If you leave it on and on auto, it'll automatically switch from gas to power when you're plugged into 30 amp. So at your campsite, you plug in, it'll automatically switch over and it'll stay nice and cold until you're ready to go. Microwaves like any other microwave, 110, um, excuse me, 30 amp power at your campsite. It'll come on, works like any other microwave, no problem. Stove is the same. Stove, whenever you want to light it, make sure your propane's on, click it, and that's it. This is your starter right here. And then that adjusts the height. We don't have propane on right now, so it's not going to work like it's supposed and don't to. don't close that when it's hot. And then make sure you don't close this glass piece when it's hot. Right now it's not that hot, so we're going to just keep moving. So the stove is a little different. All right, first of all, you have your lights right here. Now this has two different settings. So it has a stove light and your, um, your control lights right here that light up in blue. What I like is you can turn on just the control lights so you can see them at night and it's actually a nice night light for the children uh, they really like and it lights up a pretty decent amount of this trailer so all the way up is just the knobs all the way down is inside the oven and the knobs now for the oven when you go to light it it takes about 30 seconds for this thing to actually light because once again just like the um the griddle outside the blackstone you need to get propane all the way from the front into the stove and then light. So when you go to do your stove, there's a little light, little match looking fire thing right here. Put that on that. Let it sit there for a few seconds and then turn your striker. This is slowly going to light it. It'll take up to 30 seconds to light. Okay. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't do it the very first time because it doesn't have any propane gas in the lines. Inside here, just all the utensils you need, knives, forks, spoons, um, can opener, wine opener. We have a big knife in there. We even have a cutting board under there as long, along with a little dish mat. dish mat. We also have coffee filters and we have a coffee pot. I'll show you that in a minute. We do not have coffee. You have to bring your own coffee. But measuring spoons, spatulas, anything like that, skewers all in there and then down here we have aluminum foil ziploc bags plastic wrap another dish towel uh just a bunch of of odd and end stuff scrub pad that you're gonna you're gonna need and our goal is to make make it where every rent every camper every renter doesn't have to bring a lot uh, we really want to make it to where you can bring just your clothes and uh, whatever stuff that you kind of feel comfortable with Dude. but as far as Utensils, cookware, um, we have a trash can, we have cleaning supplies, there's the coffee maker in the back, you just need to bring your own coffee, trash bags, cleaning supplies, trash can. And then up here, we have all your plates, your cups, we have, have coffee cups, olive oil for your cooking pans, we have some spices in here, over here we have some pots and pans. Anything like that, anything you need, our goal is to make it the easiest as possible for the renters. Uh, so they can just bring their own food, bring the clothes that they need, any other kind of fun stuff they want to bring. But we've got it covered as far as cooking and sleeping and showering. And we'll have paper towels and toilet paper. Paper towel rack right here. You'll have your paper towels right there. This one clicks on and off like all the other ones. And then right here you have a little docking station for USB and normal plug-ins. Um, plug in the coffee pot or whatever you want, charge your phones or whatever. To close it, you push this little red button in right there and then push it down and click it and that's it. Your sink is one size. It does not have a partition in the middle. Just like any normal sink, hot and cold. Turn it on, turn it off and it goes into your gray tank. 
And normally we just stick it over there. This can also double as a cutting board if you need it. And we usually stick it right here, kind of out of the way. Is usually a great spot. Moving to the master bedroom. Also have a big storage unit right here if you need to. Yep, that's great for random stuff. There's nothing in there when you get the trailer, so you can put anything you want inside there. Moving to the master bedroom. This has two lights. One right here, and then one directly over your head when you're laying down. Okay? Both sides of the master bed, where your heads are at, have USB ports and 110 plugs right there. Little cubbies, okay? Both sides. So you have plenty of room for charging, um, leaving whatever you want. There's stuff up here. You can leave books and whatnot, your phones, all types of stuff. Inside here, we don't usually keep the pillows there. When the bed is made, the pillows will not be in there. But it's basically a closet, all right? It has a hook and everything so you can bring hanger clothes. That's on both sides. Drawers, both sides. Plenty of room for stuff. And then on the, what I call the passenger side of the trailer, the main side, there's a laundry chute right here. This laundry chute is perfect for, you guessed it, dirty laundry. And it goes outside into the lower storage on the front of the trailer. Okay? That right there is the exit, the storage on the outside. So that's where your clothes will go. In the master bedroom is the other emergency window, and it's going to be right there. And it's uh, super easy to use. Also, the master has pocket doors that slide so you just undo them and then they slide closed both sides we put these little uh, hooks up here for your hot hang your towels or robes whatever you want to hang all right and that is it in the master bedroom the air conditioner controls for this trailer are right here you'll start with mode if it's off you'll start with mode that's just the fan on the air conditioning it will not work if you're not plugged into 30 amp the battery is not strong enough to do it that's your air conditioning degrees right here, right? Up and down. That's your heat. That's your furnace. It'll run off your propane or if you're plugged into your 30 amp, and then that's off again. Fan, that's not air conditioning. That's just circulating air. Air conditioning, AC, if you hit fan, you can turn on your strength of it. Okay? Off. Closing your slide is just like opening your slide. It will hit a stop and it will stop on its own. All you have to do is hit glide room in. And the glide room or slide will slowly move in. Always make sure that the walkway area is clear. We, you do not want the slide hitting anything as it comes close. Same with the outside. Make sure that you're clear on the outside before you move it in. That's it.